All right, so here we go back to our equilibrium condition that supply is equal to demand. As we said, this uh, equilibrium condition defines tightness as an implicit function of productivity A. So now what we're going to do is we're going to consider um, a small change in um, productivity. All right, so we consider a small change in productivity, uh, which we call D log A, okay? So log of A, if you want A is going to change by a small amount, log of A is going to change by a small amount, uh, which we call D log A. Okay, so what's going to happen? Uh, so that means that because tightness is a function of A, Tightness will have a small change d log theta. That's the induced <coughs> small change in theta. Okay, and uh, what we want to know is that when we have a small change d log a in productivity, um, what is the size of the small change d log theta? In, uh, in tightness. So, you know, we could look at the small change d a and look at the change d theta, but you know, if a and theta change, their logs are also changing. And because we are looking for an elasticity, it's useful to uh, think about small changes in log of a and log of theta. Okay? Now, the thing is that before and after the change in productivity, the equilibrium condition that supply is equal to demand holds. So, it holds before and it holds after, which means that the labor supply and the labor demand, they have to change by the same amounts, right? Because they are equal before the shock, they are equal after, so they've changed by the same amount. So um, we can compute the change that affect uh, the, labor, uh, the labor supply and the labor demand, and these two are going to be equal. Oh, and something that's important, so you remember we said that one of the key uh, Leibniz relationship was that for a function f, df was f prime of x, dx, right? Um, but then what you can infer from that is that df over f is equal to f prime of x, dx, 1 over f. And then what you can infer from that is that df over f is x over f, f prime of x, dx over x. We have just multiplied up and down by x. And then what you learn from that is that the d log f is equal to, this you recognize the elasticity here of f with respect to x and d log x. So, in the same way that uh, when we use Leibniz notation, df is f prime of x dx, so the link between df and dx is the derivative. Similarly, the link between log of f and log of x in small changes is the elasticity. So, a small change in log of x that's triggered by a small change in log of x. These two things are related by the elasticity of f with respect to x. Okay, so here if we use that, oops, sorry. Um, so d log of the labor supply, it's going to be equal to the elasticity of the labor supply with respect to theta times d log theta, right? Because our labor supply is only a function of theta. But the labor supply, we said, was f of theta divided by s plus f of theta times h. Okay. Now, what does that tell us about the elasticity of the labor supply with respect to theta? So here you multiply f over s plus f by h, you know that that doesn't change the elasticity. So we only need to find the elasticity of f over s plus f. That elasticity, we computed it, we said it was 1 minus eta times u, where u is just the unemployment rate. So from this, we learned that after the small change 
in productivity, which induces a small change in tightness. D log ls is going to be equal to 1 minus eta times u times d log theta. Okay, so this is going to be the change in labor supply. Okay. Now we can compute the change in labor demand that's induced by the small change in productivity. Then this two, of course, would be equal. We use that. Okay. So d log labor demand. Uh, so here it's a bit tricky because the labor demand is equal to it depends on tightness, but it also depends on productivity. So um, using rules that we know for partial differentiation. We learn from that and just extending, if we extend the result that we have here, uh, this result here also extends to multivariate uh, functions. Um, so if we use that here for labor demand, which is multivariate, it depends on theta and a, we get that the elasticity of labor demand with respect to theta d log theta plus the elasticity of labor demand with respect to a d log a is going to give us the derivative of um, log of ld. And you know, this is the same as saying that for a function f, using again like this notation, but for a function f that depends on x and why we know that a small change in f that result from small change in x and, and y is going to be partial f partial x dx plus partial f partial y dy so if you use that you can get the same result for the elasticities okay so now the question is what is the elasticity of labor demand with respect to theta what is the elasticity of labor demand with respect to a so the labor demand theta a we said that it was alpha a 1 minus gamma omega 1 plus tau of theta alpha 1 over 1 minus alpha Okay, um, so from this we see very easily that the elasticity of labor demand with respect to A, what's, what's it going to be? So A shows up in the bracket terms, but the term in bracket is put to the power of 1 over 1 minus alpha, so it's going to be 1 over 1 minus alpha times the elasticity of what's in the square bracket. Um, so, but now we, we are looking at, if you want, a, a partial elasticity, so an elasticity with respect to A keeping theta constant. And so if theta is constant, all the terms in that square bracket are fixed, except the terms that depend on A, so except this term here. Um, and so here we have again an exponent, we have the 1 minus gamma, and then we just have A. So the elasticity of A, the power of 1 minus gamma, is just 1 minus gamma. So then we found that the elasticity of labor demand with respect to A is just 1 minus gamma, over 1 minus alpha. Okay, so that's, uh, that's pretty simple. Now, what is the elasticity of the labor demand with respect to theta? Again, we are looking for partial elasticities where we keep A uh, fixed. So, what is our elasticity here? Um, well, so we have again that exponent, so we have 1 over 1 minus alpha that we put in front of our elasticity. Then now we are keeping everything constant. So the uh, theta term only shows up here. So we have a 1 plus tau of theta to the power of alpha, so we can put an alpha here, times the elasticity of 1 plus tau of theta with respect to theta. But that elasticity, that's why we, uh, as a preliminary result, we computed it earlier and we said that this elasticity here was tau times eta. So the elasticity of labor demand with respect to theta is going to be alpha over 1 minus alpha times eta times tau. Okay? All right, so then if we uh, 
user condition here, we find that d log labor demand is going to be equal to so elasticity with respect to a, which is this, so which is one minus gamma, one minus alpha d log a plus elasticity with respect to theta, alpha one minus alpha eta tau d log theta. Okay, so uh, this is an important result in our uh, in our in our analysis. So I can highlight it. So we have the derivative here. Here I should have also highlighted this. Okay, so now we have the we have the change in labor supply and we have the change in labor demand that are driven by uh, by the change in A. But we know that before the shock, we have that the labor supply at theta is equal to the labor demand at theta and A. After the shock, if we use a prime to denote the new equilibrium. We have the labor supply theta prime is equal to the labor demand theta prime a prime. And from this, we infer that the change from the initial labor supply to the final labor supply must be equal to the change from the initial labor demand to the final labor demand. So from this, we infer that the changes must be equal so that d log ls must be equal to d log ld. You know, the change in labor supply and the change in labor demand must be exactly the same. And of course, the change in their log but also, must also be exactly the same. And so, if we use this, we get, using this, the change in labor supply, it's 1 minus eta u d log theta must be equal to the change in labor demand, which we have here, which is 1 minus gamma 1 minus alpha d log a plus alpha 1 minus alpha eta tau d log theta. Okay, great. And but what we are at the end interested in is to have the elasticity of the tightness with respect to productivity because that's something that we know we know in US data it's about eight. So we're trying to see whether we can get that in the model. So if I divide everything by log of a I get that 1 minus eta u d log theta d log a is equal to 1 minus gamma 1 minus alpha plus alpha 1 minus alpha eta tau d log theta d log a. Now if I collect all the terms in d log theta d log a to be able to compute it, I get that One minus eta u. Oh, sorry, that's it. All right, something that I missed here. Right, when we compute when we computed the elasticity of the labor demand, here you see what I missed is that the one plus tau alpha was in the denominator, not the numerator, so there is a minus missing here. Um, right. There's a minus missing. Okay, great, because we have the one over one minus alpha that comes from here. We have the alpha that comes from here. We have the elasticity of one plus two, but all of this is in the denominator. So minus should have been added here. Okay. A minus should have been added here. Okay. And hence, a minus should be added here. All right. And hence, minus should be here. And a minus should be here. All right, and so then here we get a plus.
OK, then we get dlog dlog a, and that's going to be equal to 1 minus gamma over 1 minus alpha. All right. Um, and so now we are, we are essentially done. So what we can do, we can multiply both sides of the equation um, by uh, 1 minus alpha, just to simplify a bit, and then divide left and right hand side, move this big square bracket thing on the left hand side, and what do we get? We get that d log theta d log a is going to be equal to 1 minus gamma divided by 1 minus alpha one minus eta u plus alpha eta tau. So that's our elasticity. So this took quite a lot of work. <laughs> we had to um, go through a bit of uh, results over how elasticities are computed. Um, but this is a nice result. It shows that in our model, those models are quite complicated. We have supply, demand, lots of stuff moving around. We can get uh, what's called a closed form expression uh, for the elasticity of theta with respect to A. Okay? And, um, and so let's see now if that, what that elasticity uh, tells us about how much tightness responds to A. So what we can do is plug in a few numbers and try to see what the order of magnitude of that elasticity. 